as you can see here, we have two points uh, P and T uh, that are situated three millimeters apart in the electric field of positive charge Q as shown below. Yeah, it's easy to see. And then for 10.1, uh, the question says that let's draw the electric field pattern around charge Q. Clearly, charge Q is positive, so the electric field lines should be radiating outwards, right? So in your answer book, uh, we shall see uh, something of this manner. And then if it was the other way around and the charge Q uh, was negative, uh, then the electric field lines uh, should be pointing uh, towards the charge itself and not outside uh, your electric field lines should be evenly separated and they should be of equal length right and then let's do 10.2 so we are told now that the magnitude of electric field at point p is 4 times 10 to the power 6 newtons per coulomb so for the sake of clarity let's just you know write that down before we solve any problems so we see that the electric field at p Right, so we're calling that EP is equals to 4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per columns, right? And then at point T, the magnitude is 2.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons per column. So again, for the sake of clarity, let's say ET, right, is equals to 2.5 uh, times 10 to the power 5 uh, newtons per column. And then 10.2.1 uh, says, uh, let's calculate the ratio of the electric field at point P to the electric field at point T. Write the answer as EP is to ET. So let me make an example here. Let's say uh, we had X is equals to 6 and Y is equals to, uh, let's say Y is equals to 3, right? And we're saying that, uh, let's find the ratio x is to y the ratio x is to y uh, you would do the following so you would say x is to y in place of x you put in 6 and then in place of y you put in 3 right but then you can see that you can divide both sides by 3 and then if you do that uh, you're gonna get uh, 2 is to 1 and that's the ratio of x to y so we are applying the same idea here right we're saying that ep is to et but then what is ep we know fully well that ep is 4 uh, times 10 to the 6 uh, newtons per column and then what is et that is 2.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons per column right so we're dividing which number by which number here because it's no longer straightforward uh like for instance when you have six and three right so we divide uh both number by the smallest clearly between four times ten to the six and two point five times ten to the five 2.5 times 10 to the 5 is the smallest one. So we're going to divide by 2.5 times 10 to the 5 on both sides. Uh, so on the right hand side, we essentially uh, dividing it by itself. So we should get 1, right? And then now we're going to say 4 times 10 to the 6 divided by 2.5 times 10 to the 5, right? That should give you 16. So EP is to ET as a ratio of 16 is to 1. And now let's do 10.2.2. 10.2.2 10 is a bit complicated. Uh, there's some math here that is involved, right? Uh, but let's see uh, what we can do. So he's saying let's find the distance between charge Q and point p charge q and point p right so let's see uh, what we can do here so obviously we can say ep is equals to k q divided by r squared right that's the formula we have for uh, the strength of an electric field at a given point right but then lucky for us we know fully well what ep is ep is 4 times 10 to the power of 6 which is equals to k uh, k is a constant that is 9 times 10 to the power 9 and then q at this point we don't know the value of q right so we'll just uh, put it as it is and then from q to p we don't know the distance that's what we're looking for so let's just put 
r squared, right? Uh, and then, yeah, you should be able to see now that we stuck. We have two variables and one equation. So we need another equation. How can we find another equation? We can we can use point t. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so here, uh, just to finish this off, uh, let's cross multiply. If we cross multiply, uh, we're going to get uh, 4 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by r squared is equals to 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by q. And then we can call this our uh, equation 1, right? And now uh, to use point t, we're going to say that uh, et is equals to k q divided by r squared. And then what is et? We know fully well what et is again, right? Uh, that is 2.5 times 10 to the 5 uh, being equals to 9 times 10 to the 9. And then uh, what is Q? Uh, we still don't know what Q is. And then now uh, what is R squared? No, now R squared is the distance from Q to T, right? We already established that the distance from Q to P is R, right? So Q T should be R plus this three millimeters here, right? It's only fair. So we're gonna have uh, R plus three millimeters, right? Uh, we don't deal uh, with millimeters in physics, we deal with meters. So we have to divide that by a thousand. So we're gonna have three divided by a thousand um, squared, right? Uh, now you can see that we have two variables. We're gonna end up with two equations um, and then we're gonna find R. Right, uh, therefore, so if we cross multiply here, uh, we shall get uh, 2.5 times 10 to the 5 uh, multiplied by r plus 3 divided by a thousand squared, uh, being equals to 9 times 10 to the power of 9 multiplied by q. And then what are we calling this one? We're calling this one equation 2. So you can see that. Uh, 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by q is equal to uh, this expression here. But then at the same time, 9 times 10 to the power of 9 multiplied by q is equal to uh, this expression here. So we can equate the two expressions. Uh, we're only going to have r as our variable and we're going to try and solve that. So if we do that, uh, we can say that uh, equation 1 is equals to equation 2, obviously, because they are all equals to 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by q. So, uh, equation 1 there was 4 times 10 uh, to the 6 multiplied by uh, r squared. Yes. And then our equation 2, we have uh, 2.5 times 10 to the 5 multiplied by r plus 3 divided by uh, 1000 squared right so a lot of people when they get to this step uh they're going to uh solve this square here right uh, but then if you do that the problem becomes very complicated so what i want you to do instead you take square roots on both sides so that you don't have to square anything and end up having to solve a quadratic uh, equation right uh so let me show you what i'm talking about so we're going to take uh the square root on uh, the left hand side and we're also going to take uh, the square root on the right hand side if we do that we're gonna get uh, the square root of uh, 4 times 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by instead of r squared now we just have r right and then on the right hand side uh, we're going to have the square root of 2.5 times 10 to the power of 5 and then instead this square here uh, that I'm circling right now uh, is going to fall off, right? Because we're taking the square root. So we're just going to have r plus uh, 3 divided by 1000. And then we don't have the square root anymore, right? So now uh, we're going to multiply out uh, the right hand side. After we have multiply out the right hand side, we're just going to solve for r. Uh, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to have um, the square root of 4 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by r. Uh, being equals to the square root of 2.5 times 10 to the 5 uh, multiplied by r plus uh, the square root of 2.5 times 10 
uh, to the 5 multiplied by 3 divided by um, a thousand uh, so now uh, we have R here and then we have R here we're grouping the like terms so we're going to, going to have um, 4 times 10 uh, to the 6 R minus uh, the square root of 2.5 times 10 to the 5 uh, R uh, being equals to 2.5 times 10 to the 5 multiplied by 3 divided by a thousand so I'm actually not going to put this in the calculator right I'm just gonna take R as a common factor so if I do that I'm going to get um, 4 times 10 uh, to the 6 minus uh, 2.5 times 10 to the 5 R is common factor and this will be equals to uh, the square root of 2.5 times 10 to the 5 multiply by three divided by a thousand i hope you're having as much fun watching this video as i'm having making it so now i'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of r right and then if i do that i should get r is equals to uh, the square root of 2.5 times 10 to the 5 uh, multiplied by three divided by a thousand right and then now we're dividing by that coefficient uh, which is the square root of four times uh, 10 to the 6 uh, minus uh, the square root of 2.5 times 10 uh, to the 5 and then now you can finally put the uh, this expression in the calculator in attempt to find uh, the final answer right and you should get um, 0 0.001 meters right or oh, that is also equals to one millimeter so um the distance between q and point p is one millimeter or 0 0.001 uh, meters uh, and finally uh to find the magnitude of charge q uh the magnitude of charge q right uh, we can use the electric field uh at p or at t right it doesn't matter right now because we have r it will be easy to find a q right so let's just uh, use ep so we have ep is equals to uh so we have k q divided by r squared right uh, but then ep is given to us we know fully well that uh, that is four times ten to the six uh, being equals to nine uh times ten to the nine uh, multiplied by q and then we divide in everything by 0 0.001 meters right uh, 0 0.001 meters and then uh, we shouldn't forget to square so now um yeah we can cross multiply if you cross multiply you get 4 times 10 to the 6 multiply by 0 0.001 squared being equals to uh, 9 times 10 to the 9 multiply by q you divide both sides uh, by 9 times 10 to the 9 right so you should get q is equals to 4.44 times 10 to the minus 10 columns